Though ever staunch in our faith, it has been many months since the Torkelsons last crossed the threshold of the Pyramid Corners Community Church. But today marks our return into the fold. For a new shepherd, the Reverend Langley Wilson has arrived to lead the flock. And it will be the desire of all sheep to be in attendance. A desire more acutely felt by the female sheep as this shepherd has no shepherdess. <laughs> I wonder if he has chosen this romantic solitude. Or if he, like me, will spend his whole life waiting for his one true love. Dorothy Jane! Sometimes I wonder about my mother. Is my father her one true love? And since he left, doesn't she deserve another chance? I wonder if she is ready yet to feel these yearnings once again. Dorothy Jane, get your butt downstairs. We're going to be late for church. Perhaps not. People say God looks out for the working man. Sure hope he's looking out for me. These empty pockets need a helping hand. Kitchen tables full of family. to get creative with your Malta meal. Yeah, otherwise breakfast would be boring. Uh, I certainly want you to have an exciting life. Ruthann! Can you dress yourself so pretty for church? Take your sister out back and hose her off. Chucky Lee Torkelson, your public awaits you now! I'm ready, here I am, let's go. Well, Chucky Lee, while I can't help but admire your bold sense of fashion, you look like an idiot. Miss Torkelson, there's something I need to talk to you about. Morning, Porter Hodges. You're not going to church? No, oh, not today, Dorothy Jane. I'm going fishing. Well, Porter Hodges, I'm surprised you won't be in attendance. Not as surprised as the fish. We got a new pastor. He's from Oklahoma City. And he didn't come here with his wife because, oh, he doesn't have one. <laughs> oh, what are you getting at? Nothing. Miss Torkelson, we have a problem I need to talk to you about. Come on, let's go. We want to be sure Mama gets a seat down front. No, I don't quite know how to tell you about this, but... Uh... I'm clean. Ruth Ann. She's clean. Somebody has been going through my things. I'm sorry, what did you say? Someone has been going through my things. Stephen Floyd! No, I'm not accusing the boy. All I'm saying is my stuff has been gone through. Well, you have my personal guarantee it'll never happen again. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bring me your brother. Yeah, that's better. Where'd you get that? Got it at the swap meet for a dime. You got robbed. Here he is, Mama. Thank him. Didn't I tell you to change clothes? We are going to church, Stephen Floyd, not the rodeo. Now, I'm going to say this one time and one time <clears throat> only. You go through Mr. Hodges' things again, and I will skin you alive. Is that clear? I can't hear your head rattle. Yes, ma'am. Why would you do such a thing? I don't know. You didn't take any of Mr. Hodge's belongings, did you? I wouldn't do that. But you'd walk into his room and look through his things. I guess I would. Why? I don't know. That's no answer. Well, it's the only answer I've got. I think he needs to be punished. So do I. Put this on. And Stephen Floyd, this isn't over. She's gonna spank you good. Well, 
Well, it has been too long since we've been in church. A worship service like that, it's like Formula 409 for the soul. Don't you think so, kids? It's over. Let's get out of here. You know, what I find most uplifting is that our new preacher is gorgeous. Yeah, let's meet him. Dorothy Jane. Hello, Pastor! Dorothy Jane. Oh, he's coming over here. Oh, he's smiling at me. I'm gonna faint. Well, good morning, ladies. Morning, Pastor. Oh, I couldn't help but notice your family down front. Nobody ever sits down front. We were late. Well, it's nice to see a family worshiping together. I hope your husband will join us next time. My husband and I are separated, Pastor. Uh, I was just discussing with my attractive separated daughter-in-law here how moving I found your sermon. Well, thank you very much. I liked it, too. Knocked me right out. Well, I appreciate your honesty. Thanks. My mom is pretty. Would you take your little sister outside, Dorothy Jane? Yes, ma'am. My mom is pretty. <laughs> Hi, Millicent Torkelson, embarrassed spinster woman about town. Hey, Ma, can we go now? Don't you see me standing here talking, Stephen Floyd? You know, you look about the right age to join us on the hayride tonight. Yeah, right. I'll be there, Pastor. Good. See you tonight. Well, why can't you go down the ladder? Because you go down the chute. Well, how do you get down the ladder? You don't want to get down the ladder. I want to get down the ladder. I can't play with her. I just love Jane Austen. I love the women she writes about and, and how they get kissed. And the next thing you know, they fall in love and get married. And that's the end of the book. I can't wait to get kissed like that. You think I'm too young to read Jane Austen? Yes, I do. Good. Who are you reading at my age? D.H. Lawrence. What do you write? Nancy Drew. <laughs> oh, good night. Whoa! Yeah? All dressed up for an evening on the front porch, Stephen Floyd? No. Where do you think you're going? Do I have to say? Only if you want to get out the door. Well, I was thinking maybe I'd go on that hayride thing tonight. The church hayride? I know why. Aw, oh, come on, Roseanne. We all know why. Why? Stephen Floyd's got a girlfriend. Her name's Deborah Jo Phillips, and she thinks Stephen Floyd's a babe. You know, Stephen Floyd, your recent behavior does not merit your going out tonight. But because this is a church-related activity, and I know there'll be at least four church ladies keeping you under constant surveillance, I'm going to look at this as a minimum security prison hayride. <laughs> but before you go, your loving mother would like to instruct you on proper hayride behavior. Okay, what? Now, this being your first opportunity to sit side by side in a truck full of hay with a female member of the species, you are undoubtedly as nervous as a chihuahua. <laughs> Happily, we are here to help. We can answer any question you may have regarding matters of the human heart. What do you know? More than you, I'm a lady. I have lived two years longer than you, and I am more familiar with romantic parameters. What do you mean by that? Nothing, I'm just talking. <laughs> You are to be a gentleman, Steve, treating your object of affection with the utmost courtesy and respect. And if she should reach over and brush your hand with hers, by all means, brush back. And as you gaze into each other's eyes in the pale moonlight, your two hearts beating as one, and you reach over and touch her hand like Wayne Ellis touches my hand in fourth period history. And I know he wants to kiss me, but he just doesn't know it. Because women are more mature and know what's going on. And he doesn't even know what's going on and that he wants to kiss me. But I think it's going to happen soon. What? Just let Wayne Ellis mature at his own pace. How am I supposed to know if she wants me to kiss her? You'll just know. Unless you're an idiot like Wayne Ellis. But kiss gently. For when the lips of two people meet for the first time, their souls touch. You read too much, Dorothy Jane. 
You are obviously not speaking from personal experience. Why not? Because when the lips of two people touch for the first time, they generally bump teeth and don't know where to put the noses. <laughs> Steve, have a nice time. Looks like your brother's turning into a young man, huh? Where do you put the noses? <laughs> you have just made me very happy. <laughs> Ruth Ann, the air is positively humid with romance. Play something appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Floyd will fall in love for the first time tonight, Mama. I remember the first time I fell in love. I can't wait till I'm able to say that. Well, I'm able to say that. I fell in love for the first time on a bug hunt. You fell in love with Daddy on a bug hunt? The last thing we were supposed to catch was a butterfly. Only no butterfly was good enough for me because I just wanted to be with him all day long. And sometime in your life, you will also meet someone who just electrifies your senses and there's no logic to it and you don't know why. There's just passion. And your whole relationship is based on chemical attraction and your time together is dictated by desire and want. And these feelings completely overwhelm your rational mind. And this will happen to you only once in your life, Dorothy Jane. So whatever you do, marry the next guy. <laughs> Stephen Floyd! How was your evening? What's the matter? Torkelson. Well, hello, Pastor. I'm sorry to have to tell you that your son was caught in a compromising position this evening with a young lady. Define compromising. Well, they were kissing. <laughs> kissing? Pastor Wilson, doesn't the Bible say we should greet one another with a kiss? Not a French kiss. on a hayride. Dorothy Jane, kindly escort the Reverend into the living room where I shall join you momentarily. Certainly, Mother. This way, please. She is an excellent mother. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Floyd has decided to join us after all. <laughs> Dorothy Jane, I'm sure the Reverend would appreciate a glass of tea. And you probably want me to get it. <laughs> well, no! <laughs> That'd surely make you shout hallelujah. I believe it would. Now, when you say French kiss, I don't suppose you mean he was kissing her on both cheeks? Well, no, uh, it was more, uh, interior. Stephen Floyd, did your tongue find itself in a different mouth this evening? Yes. And how did it know to do that? Oh, it figured it out when she put her tongue in my mouth first. Peer pressure. You got kissed enough? Major. He got kissed before me. My little brother got kissed before me. I'm sitting here reading books and he's out there getting kissed. More than once. <laughs> you have no reason to be smug, young man. Does he? Well, I'm not convinced we know everything that happened under the hay. Under the hay? Was that her idea, too? No, that was mine. You were around it right now. I didn't do anything. You went under the hay. Why did you go under the hay? I don't know. You don't know. You don't know anything, do you, Stephen Floyd? You don't know why you go through Mr. Hodge's things. You don't know why you go under the hay. You don't know why you do anything you do. Why should I know why I do anything I do? Brush your hands if she brushes your hands. You read a lot of books, Dorothy Jane, but you don't know anything, really. Why should I listen to you about this stuff? Daddy hasn't even been in this house for a year and a half. Hey, hey, if you knew anything, he never would have left. All I have is you women here trying to tell me how to act like a man. If I listen to you, you could ruin my whole life. Stephen Floyd. No!
Well, uh, I guess my work is done. <laughs> yeah, well, mine never seems to end. It wasn't my intention to upset you, Mrs. Torkelson. And frankly, all the chaperones, they may have overreacted to what was only slightly less than innocent hayride etiquette. Well, thank you for bringing him home. You're welcome. So, uh, I guess I'll see you in church? Yeah, maybe. Just maybe? Well, if you and your family don't show up next week, I've lost half my congregation. We just came by today to meet you, Pastor, and now we met you, and we'll see you when we see you. Millicent, is there something you'd like to tell me? Are you asking me personally, or is your meter running? Whichever you need. The church had a food and clothing drive to help the needy in our community. We gave clothes the kids had outgrown, shoes, some of my spicy pickled eggplant. Well, Christmas morning, we find a package out here. Toys, clothes, a jar of my spicy pickled eggplant. We haven't been back till this morning. I'm sorry. That must have hurt a woman such as yourself. But I'm sure they thought they saw a need. Yeah, well, that's the part that hurts the most. Well, I hope you'll give us another chance. My time here will be far less interesting without you. Oh. You, uh, you have a piece of hay. <laughs> Well. 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 get stuck in there. Don't girls have like really pointy teeth and... Do my teeth look pointy? Actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> you hear the punishment? I know you got nothing but women around here giving you advice about everything. And I know you'd prefer it was your daddy telling you what it is you're supposed to do on a hayride. But me is what you get. And I gave you the best advice I know how. You forgot to tell me don't get caught. Hey, Steve. I understand it's hard for you when it comes to girls and that sort of thing to take advice from me. So what you need is to find someone that you trust and that you respect who can give you advice of that nature. Like who? We got Mr. Hodges living right in this house, and you already know a lot about him since you went through his things. Which, by the way, I explained to him that he's the first man living here since your father left, so there's a natural fascination on your part, which he seemed to understand. But even so, first thing tomorrow morning, you apologize to Mr. Hodges. Yes, ma'am. Ma. Yeah, you've had enough kissing for tonight. <laughs> All this trouble over kissing? Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hodges. Hey, Stephen Floyd. I'm supposed to apologize to you first thing in the morning. Oh. <laughs> you know, my daddy always said, if you got something to say you're sorry for, do it before you go to sleep. That way you don't have to start tomorrow with yesterday's business. I'm sorry I went through your stuff. I won't do it again. Okay. Was there uh, anything particular you were looking for? 
I'm not sure. I see he used different kind of shaving cream than my dad. I'm going to use the same kind he uses when I start to shave. Uh-huh. And how come he got so many cufflinks? I had a really good day today fishing, and I was just standing on the bank. And I couldn't help imagining how much better a day I could have next weekend if I could just get a strong boy to pull a rowboat out into the middle of the river for me. Well, if you know of one, um, I generally like to leave around 8 o'clock in the morning. Mom already had a big talk with me. I don't need to hear from you. I want to know how that kiss was. What? See, I've never been kissed like that. Can't believe you got kissed like that before I did. I want to know how it was, and I can't believe I'm asking you. It was all right. It was all right? It was better than all right. What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking three things. First, I thought... This feels strange. Then I thought, this feels good. Then they ripped us apart, and I thought, boy, am I in trouble now. In my imagination, I think when a boy puts his arms around me and kisses me like that, it'll be a moment I'll never forget as long as I live. Oh, they'll come and rip you apart. Mama tries to tell me about how I'm going to feel and some of what happens when you're in love. I think she can only tell me what happened with her. You know, what's going to happen with me might be completely different. Yeah, but at least you got Mama to talk to about it. It doesn't matter, Stephen Floyd. I mean, even if Daddy was here, and even if he talked to you, you still got to go through it by yourself. See, this time in our life is the hardest time because everything's going to happen to us now. It doesn't matter who we talk to. They can only tell us stories about themselves. What's going to happen to us? Going to grow up. We're going to get kissed. We're going to get caught. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. <laughs> 